Great. So I have, I have a real treat for vet stem, um, both uh, patients and veterinarians and owners of animals that have used the vet stem services to treat their animals with stem cells for various diseases. You know, you often hear that stem cells aren't used in the United States and they're not ready yet and patients haven't gotten treated and it's sort of hard to believe with all the thousands of patients we treat, but patients really are getting treated. Holly, who I've just met, uh, has consented to sit down and chat with me a little bit, a little bit about her story. And maybe she'll tell you um, a little bit of the background, but Holly has MS. And I'm now meeting her for the first time. Obviously, I couldn't tell because you've been through treatment. But um, I, to be able to see a patient that has gone and gotten this, literally the same kind of treatment, the same kinds of stem cells that we've used in thousands of animals, a real treat. Holly, thanks a lot for coming and, a and chatting for a minute. Tell us just a little bit about the timeline of the story and maybe like how long ago you knew you had MS and, sure. and a little bit of the course because I think people are really interested to hear a little of the story. Sure. Yeah. I was actually diagnosed with multiple sclerosis about five years ago. Um, I live here in San Diego where your company uh, oh, excellent, is. Oh, excellent. And um, I had gone through the process of taking all the drugs available for multiple sclerosis. I, I was at a point of where I wasn't functioning. I couldn't walk. Um, I was blind in my right eye. I had stopped working. Um, I had gone through an enormous amount of money just on the drug costs. Um, I'm insured, but it didn't cover what I Still, thought it was yeah, going to. Yeah. And so um, I was told that I was going to live the rest of my life in a wheelchair. And um, being an intelligent person and being someone that knows how to do research. You said no. I said that's not my future. <laughs> and um, yeah, living yeah, in a great yeah, city, yeah, I decided yeah. to look out all of the resources yeah. I could. Yeah. And found out that about another, um, another science company here in San Diego that deals with stem cells and contacted stem cell clinics worldwide and got the real information and yeah. the real scientific stuff behind it. Yeah. And um, I had stem cell treatment um, about a year and a half ago and uh, when I came home after 30 days of treatment I could actually walk onto the plane and um, within wow. three months I was back to um, my life as it was five years previous to that. So it's pretty remarkable. Wow, so Holly, so making the decision to go offshore outside our safe United States to go get treatment in a foreign clinic right. is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you sort of decide as a, as a patient and, and you're not a PhD and you're not an MD. No. You're, you may have some scientific <laughs> expertise. But, I don't. But you're, I just, just, do. you're just a patient. Right. And so how did you go through that? How did you make your own personal decision that it was the right thing to do? Um, you know, I wasn't desperate, but I definitely yeah. knew, uh, you know, yeah. that there are medical libraries. There right. are lots of scientists and yeah. doctors and researchers that you can talk to. You just got to, yeah. you know, get the courage to pick up the phone and make a lot of phone calls and ask a yeah. lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a self-advocate and right, understand. Right. And I was fortunate enough to come across so many great people um, that answered the questions and said, this is good, this is bad. You know, you're doing um, treatment with animals and it relates to the human side. And taking all of that, and I was so fortunate enough to talk to the right people. And so now, you know, I've gotten the benefit from it. It's just absolutely excellent. Wow. And then in, in comparison with drug therapy, mm -hmm. which there are, you know, I spent much of my career actually working with companies and developing drugs. And there right. are some spectacular drugs and, and we've made big progress. Yeah. But some of the drugs that for your disease, for, for MS that you have to take, they're kind of rough drugs. They were rough drugs. It was a tough four years of like consistent yeah. drug therapies. And um, yeah. I would have stayed on the drug therapies if they had worked for me. You know, right. I, didn't, right. I didn't hope for this. I didn't right. think that I had to be some rogue patient and actually make the conscious right. decision to leave the country to do right. this for right. right now. I also didn't want to wait the eight to ten years that I could see that possibly waiting right. for something like this to come along. Um, and so um, I would have... I would have gladly stayed on the drug therapy as I was on, but it just wasn't working in my case. Right. Really interesting in the dog world, in arthritis, which if you've had dogs, you know, and they get arthritis, and they get old age pain, and they're on the same pain meds that we get on, and it just rips your heart out, yeah. you know, as you know. They can't go up the stairs, they can't catch the frisbee anymore, they can't do the things that, you know, and, you know, they're getting up there in age, and you're, like, having to make the decision, is it, like, we reach the end? Yeah. It is unbelievable um, exciting when you see both patients like that that have no more good choices. The drugs either don't work or the side effects on the liver, the effects are bad. Mm -hmm. And then we can, we can figure a way to have their veterinarian help them with their own stem cells in exactly the same procedure you got. We don't do liposuction in dogs. We actually go in and take a little surgical piece of fat out, but it's the same thing. Oh. And, and then we process it in the same way and inject the dogs both intravenously, like you probably got treated. Yes. And in the joint, if there's a particular joint that's bad, we'll inject into the joint okay. um, in a dog. And it's the same thing. You know, within weeks, they get 
kids start getting improvement, and you see now they can start going up and down the stairs, they'll go chase the frisbee, they'll start doing some of that that they used to be able to do. And, and some of them, we've seen it last for many, many years now with no more treatments, and some of them need to be treated again. So you, did you, did you get, just get one series of treatments? Um, I, you know, at the time that I went, the clinic wasn't yet saving stem cells, so I went, I chose to go back and have my stem cells saved for future use. Um, I'm oh, not, good for you. Uh, good you know, I, I don't, I don't know when, you know, yeah. the effects are going to uh, diminish. But, but you've got them now saved, ready, right? ready to use for next time, <laughs> right. so you've got, and that's important for people to know, too. And like, even with dogs, and they're smaller, obviously, mm -hmm. most dogs are smaller than humans, but we collect enough fat, and it's just a small amount, you know, a couple of tubes of fat. We save the extra stem cells we don't need, mm -hmm. and so we have banked in the room right next door to us. Wow. We have banked for the future, I think now 4,000 samples. So dogs that four years from now that are running, jumping off the pier and blow their cruciate ligament just like we do <laughs> when we play soccer on the weekend, um, then we've got those cells, and, we, and all you have to do then is thaw them out. There's no surgical procedure. And you can get injected. So same reason you did. We, you know, many many people save those, and so you know it, it is really nice because we really can't guess now. You know, we're, on the human side, I know many stem and others are doing MS and rheumatoid arthritis, and and now they're starting to work on spinal cords and some other very difficult diseases. Mm -hmm. Sky's the limit on what we can do someday. But it's patients like you that are willing to tell your story, and we've got many animal owners and veterinarians that have gone on TV and. and you hear that like these stem cells don't work or you know there's all of these moral issues this obviously is your own stem cells yeah and you just concentrated them with a little bit of help and put them right back in so all of the issues arguing about you know killing embryos and all that sort of goes out the window doesn't it it does and then i come across so many people that want to know more it's nice to be able to explain the differences yeah. and where it's coming from and stuff and i just think it's new and exciting and i i can see the progression as we move forward in the future and i'm just so elated that to basically get my life back and you have bet. the opportunity so. excellent holly hey thanks a lot really appreciate it, was a pleasure. it. Thank and, you so and best much. of luck and we'll, we'll follow your blog and your your videos and and we'll share ours with you Thank thanks you. a lot